and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to run a curl command in Airtable using the free data fetcher extension. This allows you to connect to any REST API and import external data into Airtable. So curl commands or client URL commands are a standardized way to interact with servers and transfer data through the command line. It's a powerful tool widely used for testing, debugging, and interacting with APIs. So all curl commands will start with curl at the beginning of the command. As you can see here on our datafetcher.com website, we have our full length blogs on these exact tutorials. And here you can see the most basic example of a curl command being curl and then the example website. So this will perform a simple get request to this website's URL. One of the most common places that you will see curl commands is API documentation. So many API docs will show you code examples in different languages, for example, Python and curl. So for example, the OpenAI list models endpoint shows us the request as a curl command here. So if you want to follow along with this tutorial, you can head back to that blog post that I previously mentioned and scroll down until you can see this text that you can simply copy like so. Now we're going to head back to our Airtable base. So we need to open up the extensions option here in the top right hand corner, and then we'll select add an extension. The following screen will pop up and here we're going to search for data fetcher just like so. That will pop up and we're going to select add, then select add extension. Now we'll arrive to the following screen where you can either create a free data fetcher account or you can simply continue with Google. Then we're going to go ahead and select create your first request. Under application, select custom. Now under method, leave this selected as get. And for the URL, we're going to paste in that curl command into this URL input, just like so. As you can see, that says curl command imported successfully. Now this is automatically imported into the current request, including URL, headers, and any other options. So most APIs will require some type of authorization, such as an API key. So down here, we have these options and we're going to select the authorization option. So we want to leave this as the type bearer token and then under token we are going to replace this with our open API key so if you don't yet have an open API key you can simply create one and I already have that open here we are just under API keys and then create new key then select create secret key and we can copy that over back to our Airtable base where we're going to paste this into the token input just like so now your curl command may use a header or parameter for authorization so check the parameters and headers tab as well well, but some APIs will not have any authorization, so don't worry if you can't find it. Then for the output table and view, choose those that you want to import the data into. And then we're going to retitle this request as fetch curl command. Then we'll select save and run in the bottom right hand corner, select continue, and the following screen will load. This is the response field mapping. So the first time that you run the curl command request, this is what will appear and it gives you the option to choose which fields you would like to have imported into your Airtable base. So for this example, we're going to deselect all of the fields by simply selecting this button up here next to the find field bar, deselect all. Then we'll select just the ID fields like so, we'll turn that on. And we're going to map this to a new field that is called ID, simple. That is automatically done for us, so we don't need to do anything there. So once you're happy with the field mapping, if you do want to add any others or map these to existing fields, you can do so. Now we're going to select save and run in the bottom right hand corner. Select show output table and we'll arrive back to the following screen. As you can see, that information has now been imported into our Airtable base. We can now use values from the Airtable base in the curl command. So for example, if the curl command is for looking up stock prices and we have a table of stock tickers, then we have a tutorial on that blog post I mentioned earlier. You can read this guide here. If you're wanting to schedule the curl command in Airtable, you can do that by scheduling the request. And we have this full length blog on this exact topic just here as well. Or alternatively, if you want to run a curl command in Airtable, when the base data changes, you can find this information here. So hopefully today you have learned how to run a curl command in Airtable. But if you do have any questions, you can always reach out to us here at datafetcher.com, where you will also find this full length blog on this exact topic. Thank you so much for taking the time to learn today. I really hope you have a good one.